Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. What is the Feast of Tabernacles? Is it relevant to Christians? Uh, Is it important that the world knows what the Feast of Tabernacles is all about? The Jews call it Sukkot. Jesus kept the Feast of Tabernacles. And on the last great day, he said a statement that if anyone believes on me, it will be as rivers of living water coming out of his belly. What did he mean by that? Well, we're going to study today what the Feast of Tabernacles is. Now, we have two very important booklets that we'd like you to send away for today. The first booklet is, Why Were You Born? They're free booklets. There's no cost. We never ask the public for money. You're welcome to these booklets. Do you really know why you were born? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out here below? Most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet. You will be surprised. I guarantee you'll be surprised. The second booklet is The Kingdom of God. What does that mean to you? Now, I'm going to read from the inside cover of this Kingdom of God booklet. It says, Introduction. Many years ago, I thought the Kingdom of God was just religious-sounding words. In mid-1950, I came across a little booklet, Just What Do You Mean, the Kingdom of God? It opened my eyes to the truth. I was dumbfounded when I read it and studied the gospel. It became so clear through Christ's own words that this was his message that he taught his disciples and the message they were to preach to the world. I am reproducing this booklet, hoping it will be an eye-opener to you as it was to me over 40 years ago, Tom Justice Minister. Now, you can have these two booklets. All you have to do is call the number on the screen. We'll have somebody waiting for your call and we'll send those booklets out right away. Now let's go to the question. What is the Feast of Tabernacles? Now we find it in Leviticus chapter 23 with all the other feasts. So let's go in our Bibles to Leviticus chapter 23. And we'll start in verse 24. Leviticus 23, 24. Speak to the children of Israel and saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of the blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. Now, we explained that the week before last. The seventh trumpet blast, Jesus Christ returns. So this memorial of the blowing of trumpets is a picture of the return of Jesus Christ. Now, let's go down a little further. Verse 27. Also, the tenth day of the seventh month, that's nine days later, shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls. What does that mean? That means you shall fast. And you shall do no work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. Who made atonement for us? Jesus Christ made the atonement. He suffered. He went through excruciating pain on what day? 
on the Passover day. That's also in Leviticus 23. So he died on the Passover day. He's coming back pictured by this day of trumpets, the return of Jesus Christ at the seventh trumpet. These holy days picture are shadows of things to come, like it says in Colossians 2, verse 16. They're shadows of things to come, and we understand them. Let's go now to verse 34. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, the 15th day of this seventh month. So we're still in the seventh month, and now we're at the 15th day. Shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. And it says here that on the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation convocation. Well, it says seven days. Now it's talking about an eighth day. What is this eighth day all about? That's a separate feast day that we're going to do next week. We're going to explain that next week. This week we're explaining the Feast of Tabernacles. Next week we're going to explain the last great day of the feast. Now, Let's go back to Leviticus 23 for a moment, and let's look here in verse 2. Leviticus 23, and we're looking at verse 2. And it says here, Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord doesn't say the Sabbath of the Jews. It says the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord. Wh whose feasts are they? The feasts of the Hebrews? The feasts of the Israelites? The feasts of the Jews? No. These are the feasts of the Lord. Holy convocations which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. Okay, now we're going to Isaiah chapter 2. Turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 2. If you don't have your Bibles, get your Bible for a moment. Get a uh, pen and, a, and uh, some paper or a notebook, and I'm sure you're going to want to write these scriptures down. Isaiah chapter 2 in verse 1. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days. These are days that are up ahead of us. We haven't come across them yet. They're future days that the mountain of the Lord's house. This is symbolism that's explained a little further. Shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Notice that all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion, that's Mount Zion, shall go forth the law. This word law is Torah. Now the Torah we find in the first five books of the Bible, we find the Torah. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Jesus Christ is going to rule from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. These are, these are implements of agriculture. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. 
this is going to be a time of peace. How long of a time of peace is this going to be? We're going to find out. Let's go first to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. This is something that's always said around Christmas time, but I wonder if we understand it. I wonder if we even believe it. For unto us a child is born. Now most of you know this by heart. Unto us a son is given. <clears throat> and the government, what form of government? The kingdom form of government because Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. No end of it. Upon the throne of David, Jesus Christ is going to sit upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Wow, this is amazing. Let's go now to Isaiah chapter 65. We're going to learn about this millennial period this period of peace. We're going to read about it. And let's start in verse 18. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall, be, shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Is that true today? No, it's not. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years years old. So the child is going to live for a hundred year period. So will the old man also live for a hundred year period. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. Trees last a hundred years, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Now we're going to take a break here. We're going to come back. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. We're still in Isaiah chapter 65. Read along with me. Verse 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. How do you like that? Before people call, God is going to answer them. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is a fantastic time. This is a time of peace. This is a 1,000 year period that's called the millennium. Let's go now to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14 and we'll learn more. 
in verse 16. Zechariah chapter 14 in verse 16. And here we read, And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, that's Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. All the nations are going to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, on them will be no rain. Well, if there's no rain, there's no food. And if the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, these are Gentiles, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague with which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, what happened? What happened in verse 1? We're going to look here in verse 1. In chapter 14, let's look at it. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations. God is going to gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. Half the city shall go into captivity. Okay, now let's, let's just drop down to verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day it shall be one, the Lord is one, and his name is one. Wow. So Jesus Christ is going to defeat all the nations that come up against Jerusalem. And they're going to have to go up from year to year to keep the Feast of Tabernacles from year to year. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to learn in 2 Peter chapter 3 that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let's read that in 2 Peter chapter 3 in verse 8. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Okay, what does that mean? Well, there are seven days in a week. There are six days, six millennial days, that God has given to man to rule himself. He could set up his own governments. He could set up his own religions, set up his own laws, his own political parties. He can do his own thing for six days, six millennial days. Now, the seventh millennial day is when Jesus Christ is going to rule. So you're going to have a contrast. You're going to have 6,000 years of man's misrule and 1,000 years of of God's rule. You see, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, God wants everyone to come to repentance. He doesn't take delight in killing the sinner. He loves the sinner. He doesn't love the sin. But the day of the Lord, this is the Lord's day, will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with great noise. The elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, 
since all these things will be dissolved. This earth is going to be a cinder in space. What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, that's his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Wow, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Okay, explaining the Feast of Tabernacles is relatively simple. Okay, God has a 7,000 year program. Okay, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like one day. Now, 6,000 years he allows man to rule himself, okay? He could set up his own governments, set up his own religions, set up his own laws, his own school systems, teach children what he wants to teach them, and later on, after the 6,000 years is up, then God takes over. God sends Jesus Christ back, which is pictured by the Feast of Trumpets. The last trumpet, Jesus Christ returns. Now, on the Day of Atonement, there were two goats. One goat was sacrificed for the sins of the people. The second goat was sent away we read about that last week. We studied that last week. One goat was sent away into the wilderness. That second goat pictures Satan. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 20. And let's see it. Revelation chapter 20 in verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. Why is he bound up? So he should deceive the nations no more. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Now you might say, well, you got Satan bound, why would you want to release him? Okay, that's a good question. God's not finished with him yet. God is not finished with him. God has more to do with Satan. We'll read it, we'll see that next week. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received their mark, his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Where at? in heaven or on earth, Revelation 5.10, and has made us kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Wow, that's tremendous good news, fantastic good news. Don't forget these booklets, please. Send away for them. Call us today, the kingdom of God. What does that mean to you? It would only take you about 15 minutes. Read it along with your Bible. The second booklet, Why Were You Born? Fantastic reading. This, you will be surprised. I guarantee you'll be surprised. Now, we have services. We have an interactive Bible study every Saturday at the Montana Senior Village Center, 355 Montana. You're coming down El Paseo South. You're past the uh, Taco Bell turn right on Montana 
go down to the driveway on the right hand side, turn in, we're right across the way, and one o'clock every Saturday, we have an interactive Bible study. And you could hear us on KOBE 1450, 8, 8 a.m. every Sunday. Well, folks, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.